Hello and welcome, Raina. Um, thank you for featuring in our Remy Reflections series. In the series, we're aiming to talk to small business owners to discuss and debate some of the challenges faced by small business owners in today's climate. So perhaps could you start by telling us a little bit about Qprint and a little bit about yourself? Hi, yeah, of course. Um, so I started Qprint in 1997. Um, so I was quite young, um, but I think it was introduced to me through school actually. Uh, so over the past 24 years, I've gone from supplying just general business stationery and gradually added on. Um, so we now supply um, promotional items, branded clothing, large formats, and also help and advise with artwork as well. Excellent. Oh, well, wow. so that's a really rounded service then. So pretty much anything print related or marketing collateral related, signage, anything like that, you're, you're the lady to come to and you, you can help with the process from start to finish. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's where my customers come back again and again, because it's such an easy process. I quite often find they sort of ring up and say, do you do? Um, nine times out of ten, it's a yes. And then they just offload it and uh, can forget about it then until it's delivered. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, no, that's brilliant. But a, a great service, especially for a small business owner. So tell me a bit about your background. What inspired you to set to set Qprint up? What was your, your driving force behind, behind setting up the business? Well, I think I was first introduced to printing um, when I was in school. So it was, I think it was the fifth year of school and they were kind of prepping us for the big wide world and showing us videos and things on different industries, different businesses. And I can remember one particular clip and I think it was actually <coughs> screen printing as opposed to lipo printing. Mm. But it just struck a chord. It just resonated with me. I don't, I don't know why. It just really interested me. And uh, I mentioned it to my parents when I got home. And my dad said, oh, he said, well, you know, we know somebody who's got a, a small printing business. When you get to that point, we'll, we'll get in touch with them. And well, that's what happened. So I, I went through a sixth, sixth form. I did business studies in college. And then once I finished there, um, my dad then introduced me to this family run printing company. And that's where it all started for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, that's great. I remember I've, I love printing as well. I'm, I'm with you on that one. I remember one of the first printing experiences I had going to a massive warehouse with a huge printing press that took up the whole press and the yeah. noise and the sound. I will never forget. It was quite amazing. We were, yeah. we were printing holiday brochures if you can go back that far. So, <laughs> But yeah, it was re really exciting, re really interesting industry to work in. So for those that don't know, um, please can you explain the difference between LIFO and what was the other printing ex uh, process you mentioned? there green printing is is screen printing on the video oh there's all different types of printing really there's screen printing lipo printing you've got digital printing thermo printing uh, so generally with um, business stationery it's lipo printing um, where the plates are made the ink gets put into the press and the ink is then transferred from the um, plate onto the paper as it passes through mm. Digital printing is obviously more computerised. Um, a lot of the bigger digital presses now are LIFO quality, so you wouldn't really know the difference. In the early days, digital printing was, the dots were a lot coarser, so um, things weren't as clear and as sharp, maybe the images, but it was a, a good in-between because it was low cost to set up. But yeah, over the years, digital digital printing has come on massively and, and now like you're saying about the presses the size of them the digital presses now are huge um absolutely massive so uh oh wow and then the screen printing is where they actually use screens um and the ink is kind of pushed through the screen and that's generally used for clothing and things like that as well as other items but clothing they use screen prints a lot in that excellent okay yeah. thank you um what do you enjoy most about your job lots of things uh, it's really hard to pinpoint what I love I I really enjoy the artwork side um I love seeing people's ideas or thoughts that come into life and seeing the finished item and um, that's always amazing to see it come from computer screen to, to the actual finished product um and just being able to really get involved with with people and the way their businesses run I work quite closely closely with my customers um, I'm lucky that I retain customers for quite a long time so I get to know them get to know their businesses which then in turn enables me to help them 
in a more proactive way as well so I can give them more advice and ideas and try to tailor things to their specific business so if they're wanting promotional products and things like that then I'll try to think it through and come up with ideas that will work better for them so excellent. yeah I, I really enjoy the whole the whole thing yeah mm, excellent I guess maybe it's an easier question then to say what do you enjoy least about your your job is there something that you think oh no <laughs> You probably know, you probably know the answer to that. <laughs> so, <laughs> do, do we share the same uh, nightmare <laughs> here? <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm not a lover of social media. So, sort of getting you know my name out there on that side of things. Um, okay. A bit of a failure for me, which is is why I think you're wonderful because you helped me in that area. <laughs> Excellent. Um, that wasn't what I was going to say. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, no, we, I, I love social media and, and all of that side of things. So yeah, no, that's, that's good. Yeah, no, for me, it's um, pushing the go button. As you probably remember, it's that, um, yes, I've read all of the creative, I've signed it all off and yeah, go send it to print. <laughs> I must admit, there are some sleepless nights you sort of lay in bed and you think, oh, did I double check this? Did I double check that? Yeah, um, did, I, did I check the call to action? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is those bits. Of course, once it's gone through to press, there's there's no turning back, really. So, no, um, no. <laughs> but, you know, if, as long as you think things through and have a good, I think a good sort of signing off process, you, you, you know you're okay, but yeah, you, you do get that bit of self-doubt don't you <laughs> yes yeah yeah that's yeah that's definitely not my favorite thing <laughs> um if um how would you describe yourself in five words and that could be how you would describe yourself or how you think a friend or colleague might describe yourself um, might describe you that is really hard isn't it to try and I don't very often think of myself in that way but sort of positive and negative so a couple of positive I suppose I'm I'm dedicated to what I do so if I if I you know in general throughout as you know in life as well as work I like to see things through um I stick with things and um loyal I think is a, a positive one for me I'm very loyal um again I, I like to stick with people I think if you're getting a good service or a good feeling from others, then obviously that naturally makes you loyal to them as well. But I think mm, loyalty definitely. is massive. And I think I respect that as well because of my loyal customers. It, it, that's a massive thing for me in business is sort of, like I said, like retaining customers. So loyalty. Mm. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite strong on that. Um, I think I'm level-headed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say that's true. <laughs> sometimes probably too much. Um yeah, I think sometimes it stops you from letting go a little bit if you're too level-headed. But yeah, I'm not sure if that's a positive or a negative. <laughs> no, I'd but, say it's um, a positive. Yeah, so I, I am level-headed, and that, that comes from my mum. My mum's very level-headed. Um, if I've ever got any problems, I always go to my mum because I know I'll get a, a sensible, you know, level-headed thinking answer out of it. <laughs> uh, how many is that? I'm not quite sure. That's how three, I think. Determined, three. loyal, level-headed. <laughs> Um, I overthink things, so I'm probably an overthinker, uh, which okay. I don't know if that sort of goes against the level-headed side, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, I, I do overthink things to the point where you kind of end up getting yourself in knots, so I have to, you know, stop and, and rethink and... Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean that's good that you're <laughs> it's good that you're into the detail given what you do it's good that you you do over kind of get into that detail I think so I think that's yeah. that's a really positive thing yeah <clears throat> and last one last one um oh, I'm a procrastinator if that's a word so I, I tend to put things off so I, again I think if you can recognize your negative things you have to turn it around so I know I do do that so it's obviously on things that you don't want to do so I mm. tried to make myself do those things first <laughs> <laughs> excellent <Yeah. laughs> oh that's good um tell me one thing that we might not know about you uh, hopefully quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> um oh I, that's really hard I swam with sharks <laughs> that's <laughs> quite exciting <laughs> yeah where was that that was in the Dominican. Uh, oh, wow. We got married in the Dominican and uh, we went back there for a holiday afterwards and we went uh, swimming with sharks. They were nurse sharks, so I think you'd be hard pushed to be uh, attacked by one. <laughs> but it's still quite unnerving. And I think I've got a little bit of a, 
a sort of phobia of water, like deep waters. I'm finding, and I didn't even know I had it, uh, but I, I have got this sort of phobia. So I did have to make myself do that. Uh, but it was it was amazing. But yeah, I did swim with sharks. That was yeah, that was good. Yeah. Fun. That's that's a, well, a really exciting experience. That's um, yeah, and well done for overcoming your phobia. So that's that's cool as well. Um, what's the one learning that you would tell your younger self? So I guess we're starting to think about here. If um, if there's a small business owner watching this, starting to think about you know we're in a very challenging environment right now. But what's the one thing that if if I was to rewind the the clock maybe ten or fifteen years, what would you say to yourself to as kind of words of wisdom? recognize your self-worth I think that's a good one a, I think that's a, a big thing and I and it took me a long time to get to that point as well um yeah I, I think sometimes it's it's hard to give yourself that and everybody tells you you know they're always grateful for the work that you've done and, and that you know it's brilliant and you know you could have done it without you and you don't actually give yourself yourself praise and I think that's um something yeah uh, that's definitely something I would I would pass on to my younger self is, is mm. have a little bit more self-worth and and see yourself how other people see you yeah that, that's yeah. really really good advice actually because there's a lot around in kind of the media and in press and things about mm. um, imposter syndrome and and mm. things like that so you know I think as as moms in particular and ladies in small business I think that that does tend to be a really um you know a key thing to consider so that's that's really yeah. good good words of advice so yeah. thank you um what tip would you give if, if you were talking to maybe somebody at school, so you, you shared some of the experiences that you had when you discovered printing, what's one thing that maybe you would um, say to somebody wanting to start out within the printing industry? Is there one, one tip or one experience people might want to gain or you know, what, what would your thoughts be? Um, <clears throat> I think maybe to push yourself, to push your boundaries, um, to sort of be brave, and to overcome your fears if you can um i think fear stops you from doing a lot of things it stops you from moving forward and i think when you start up a business you, you've got to move forward otherwise you, you don't get anywhere mm. <laughs> um and i think that's probably the, the biggest thing is just to push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit and um quite often you know you have to weigh up what's the worst what's the worst that could happen <laughs> you know if i if you don't want to do something and you do it and it does go <clears throat> wrong um what's the worst that, that can happen and mm. quite often it, it's not really that bad um, yeah and quite no. often it, it would never happen anyway <laughs> yeah and often it can be recoverable of course as well yeah. so um yeah no that's that's great advice um what three i mean we've obviously lived through very unusual and I'm, I'm, i don't like the word unprecedented but very difficult times over the last sort of 18 months or so with everything <clears throat> surrounding covid and the environment that we found ourselves in mm -hmm. what would you see as the, the kind of the main three challenges facing small business owners as we move forward maybe over the si next six months to a year's time frame yeah. Um, I think I was, I've been quite lucky. I haven't had um, big overheads, but I know a lot of small companies, although they're small, they do have big overheads. They might have employees, even if it's only sort of, you know, small amount. It's still expenses. They have to um, be able to upkeep even when business is slow. Um, mm. So I think in that sense, people maybe dig into their, you know, buffer fund. So keeping that cash flow going is probably quite difficult for people um you know with what happened I was very lucky again I only had really a month of where it really hit me hard mm. and then as soon as people were able to sort of pivot and work out ways of remote working and gradually bringing people back into the office they're obviously starting to order prints and so I was quite lucky in that sense that I didn't get hit too hard there um, but I think a lot of businesses have, especially the hospitality. Mm, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, and the sort of deadlines kept moving. So I think that must have been quite difficult and people have lost more money then. So I think cash flow is probably one of the biggest things and to sort of pick themselves back up again mm. and having that that buffer back in play, you know, which every business every business needs a you know a, a buffer where they, you know, with the crossover and keeping that cash flow going. So I think that's, you know, people may have dug into that and they may struggle in that sense um one of the problems i'm finding is actually supplies there's a lot of um 
random materials and things you wouldn't really think of all of a sudden aren't around. I mean, we had a, a UK shortage of uh, pavement stamps. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, really quite random um, items that you wouldn't think would be a problem to get hold of um, different materials. You know, with the, um, the acrylic, that was quite hard to get hold of. So maybe smaller companies being able to get those supplies in, they may not have as, as many supplies that they can um, choose from or have, um, you know, access to. Um, yeah, I have heard of quite a few things, actually, not just within kind of the, the sort of print industry, but in other industries, there's shortages of fence panels, I think, and sort of slightly unusual things that you maybe wouldn't have thought about. So, yeah, that 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 makes sense. Um, yeah. I guess it's just being patient or trying to find alternatives as to how you might overcome some of those challenges. That's it. And it, I mean, I think it affects people, people, whether you're um, selling items on or if you're needing materials to produce things, it, it does have that knock on effect. And then, of course, you have that problem of, of sort of supply and demand to your clients as well. Mm. Um, and I, that kind of leads me on to my other one that I was thinking of it is sort of retaining those customers. People might be wanting to, you know, look, look elsewhere. Um, everybody wants to cut prices and cut costs. Uh, so whether people will start looking elsewhere and just holding on to those customers um, so that yeah. then you have to start thinking of ideas of, of how you keep those customers whether it's you know value added promotions um, extra service and things like that but all those things again cost money mm. uh, so it, it kind of all falls back to that <laughs> that yeah. one thing isn't it money um, yeah no definitely definitely yeah so I think I mean all dif all businesses will have different um, issues um, but I, yeah I think that's for me the biggest one is probably making sure I can retain those customers if they're trying to cut costs and start looking around for price matching and things like that um, and yep yeah, su supply and demand being able to get in the the items that you need and be able to get them out we've had so many different problems haven't we with the sort of the Suez Canal Brexit Covid yes <laughs> and it's all happened at once and I think just one of those issues trying to deal with them as a small business is is hard enough and then having all three um sort of come pretty much at the same time makes it even harder mm, and then of course you've got the, the small businesses that may not have been going for very long and whether they were be whether they were able to get the um the help from the governments um i know a few people yes. that had fairly new businesses um you know and, and weren't able to get that help so I think that's been quite a big issue for, for some small businesses as well you know, definitely like and you, you mentioned the the hospitality industry there as well and the bar um, and leisure industry and, and mm -hmm. staffing I think is also um, being a bit of a challenge because many people have returned home you know we have a lot of uh, farm people that have come in and work in bars and things and, and that kind of resource has been going so um, yeah some some interesting times ahead I, I, I suggest yeah, and I think so and I think with, with staff as well I guess there must be quite a few companies that have had to lay off staff because mm -hmm. you know they, they couldn't weren't keeping them on um, and then, of course, as things have reopened, they've then got to find staff again. Mm. Uh, I know one of my um, customers were, you know, struggling getting staff in um, because of that reason. They had to down downsize and cut back. And then, of course, it all got busy and they're like, oh, <laughs> we need oh, help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Brilliant. Lovely. All right. Well, thank you ever so much for joining me today, Raina. It's been really interesting to talk to you and to hear all about Qprint, to hear all about some of the um, challenges and, and your thoughts and views for, for the challenges small business owners have in the coming months ahead. So thank you ever so much for your time. Um, if anyone wishes to get a hold of you um, and find out more about you, where, where should they go? Um, visit the website, www.info at qprintsaintneats.co.uk or LinkedIn, um, Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Lovely. That's great. Thank you ever so much for your time today. Look no forward to talking Thank to you again you. soon. Take Thank care. You. Thank you.